Good morning, welcome to Terra at Home. We're back with Colleen Zimmerman and we are now talking about uh, plant life for very small spaces. So we don't want anything that's gonna sprawl and take over your yard no. because some places, some people only have a very, very small space to be yes. working with and they want some variation. Yes, and the other nice thing about these plants is that because they're meant for small spaces, they don't grow very big, lower maintenance. Good point. And, so, and really people nowadays are living that way where we seem like we're just on this perpetual wheel of you're just trying to get some time just to sit down and you know yeah, have a glass have a of wine crunch. never mind you know yeah time crunch <laughs> you don't have to do a whole lot to these plants which okay. is great very good all right so we'll start from this end over here a couple traditional things uh, you want to miss yeah highly underrated actually it is an evergreen mm -hmm. so it's good for small spaces it's good for sun it's good for part shade and it gives you that evergreen feel in the winter time that's not necessarily like a coniferous or like a cedar or a pine right. or something like that. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of nice. nice. Yeah. yeah. And there's different variations of those as well. Exactly. Because, you know, there are, there are ones that are, you know, like certain hybrids and that Yeah, been, there's white and green, yeah. green and yellow, yeah. and different variations on that, different yes. shades of green and different right. shades of yellow. So mm -hmm. some of them are brighter and some of them are different. So. Okay, nice. It's and again, point. as you're saying, that you're, we're also looking at uh, when you are planting your garden, you want to make sure you do have some, uh, some variation of, of heights. Mm -hmm. and of colors and textures. And the nice thing is too, go shopping frequently. Mm -hmm. So don't just shop in the spring, otherwise you'll find most of the things that bloom in the spring. So shop throughout the season and that way you'll make sure that you have plants that flower throughout the season as well. That's actually a really good point because a lot of people do that big, big spring shop mm -hmm. where they just go and you know on May 2-4 weekend and it's yeah. good all of our plant life for the year. But you're right, I'm, I'm finding that I'm, I'm still wanting to do that because I'm still establishing my garden. Mm -hmm. So, But you're right, you come in and you see different plants. Yes, in July and August you'll find a completely different mix of plants than you'd find in May. Same thing in September, you'll find different things in mm. September that you wouldn't necessarily find in June. Okay, all right, that's, so that's a really good idea too. That's actually a very good idea. Okay, let's talk about this guy. I yes. love the color variation in this one, it's so beautiful. Yes, this is another traditional plant is the mm -hmm. barberry. Yes, I like barberries. And it comes in a lot of different varieties too. This one here is called Rose Glow. Mm -hmm. So you can see the new growth has a little bit of a variegation to it. So it's like white and pink mm -hmm. and got that nice plummy color to it. Mm -hmm. They stay tight and compact. They can be trimmed to shape them, mm -hmm. but um, very easy care. Yes. Now these ones do have thorns. Right. So when you do have to prune them, make sure that you clean them up because they don't feel good if you step on them. But they're also good to uh, keep your animals where you need them to be mm -hmm. um, as like a little fence. And they'll, you know, they'll try it once. It doesn't mean your children. No, <laughs> but but you're actually can also you're keeping uh, you're keeping children away from your property. Exactly, <laughs> that too. People in general will cross across people's lawns and things mm -hmm. like that. You're not going to want to walk through that. No, no. You'd only do it once. And sometimes people live on corners where they're trying to protect their property a little bit. So putting something like that again, it's just it's not about hurting somebody, but it's no. just about it's a deterrent. It's a deterrent, right? Because you know you don't want people walking through your garden. So and again, they're beautiful, and sometimes people just don't respect plants enough so exactly that'll, that'll yes. learn you <laughs> and host is again another popular plant good for small spaces this one in a, is planted in a pot this one's called deja blue <laughs> and this one's actually from my garden so this one has been in this pot probably about oh, five years now so you can oh. see how they grow and flourish but they don't go wild in a pot Okay. So it's just another option and then this one probably next spring I'll take it out and put it in two pots. Right. Okay. That makes sense. But that's great because again a lot of times people will associate hostas with just exploding all over the place. Exactly. Right? So you eventually, but five years, that's pretty good. Yes. And another one in the front here is called Alakazam. Okay. So it's got more of a, a linear leaf to it, but again it's very, very small. It only gets about six inches tall. Mm -hmm. And then if you want really small, this one's called Baby Bunting. Oh. And it's just, this is like a miniature hosta or a teacup yeah, hosta. I was say, it looks like a little tiny That's as big as it gets. Hosta. Oh my goodness. So great, like if you wanted to put that in like a strawberry planter sure. or just in a little corner, like a little nook that you could find it. Okay. It's just kind of cute. All right, very good. And a few of the flowering things here. This is an aster. Mm -hmm. And again, great for hummingbirds, great Asters. for butterflies, and easy to grow and blooms for quite a long period of time as well. Okay. Mm -hmm. And in front, this is another version of Veronica. This is a blue. Veronica, mm -hmm. um, but you can still see it's got that linear form, just more compact and tidy than the one that we were talking about for the sun garden. Mm -hmm. That's right, it's very pretty. Mm -hmm. And chives. And chives. There are ornamental chives, they are edible still, mm -hmm. um, but these ones are grown more for their flowers. Yeah. And this particular one, it's a, this one of the smaller ones. There's mm -hmm. another one called Blue Eddy mm -hmm. that has really curly kind of leaves to it, mm -hmm. and another one called Millennium that I planted last year that I absolutely love. And the scapes on both this variety and all the other varieties 
they're just like the little cur like they're all little curly cues mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and they just gradually unfurl and then you get these beautiful flowers nice. afterwards i like that that's, a, that's just really cute mm -hmm. and yeah you can eat it <laughs> yeah and like a, that has a grassy texture you, there sure. are dwarf grasses as well right. so you have blue fescue which has been around for ages yes these are great again great for hot dry conditions mm -hmm. And they don't grow much taller than a foot tall. There are some newer varieties too that are different shades of blue. Some are more steely. Some are very like quite blue. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So they're kind of nice. And again, good in containers. Yep. And the Carex, one of my favorites. They're so cool. Love it in containers. It's more mounding, so it's mm -hmm. good for over top of walls, along the edge of like little retaining wall, over mm -hmm. top of stones, things like that. And it just kind of gives you that mounding feel. Right. Just kind of spills over. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then this lovely yellow flower is mm -hmm. a Coreopsis. And they are, again, beauties in the garden because they're mm -hmm. so bright, so vivid, usually in different shades of yellows and, and um, some reds, but usually ye like yellows and orange and mm -hmm. this bright golden yellow too. So many flowers. Yes, it just keeps going. Once it starts, it keeps going through the whole summer, Beautiful. which is really, really nice. This Beautiful. one's called Jethro Tall. <laughs> I love the names. You can have so much fun with just purely on the names. I know. Like the, the shrub beside it is called yeah. Tiny Wine. Yeah, this is a cute one. I like this one a lot. So actually. this is a nine bark. And mm -hmm. again, nine barks are another highly underrated plant. Mm -hmm. They are very tight, very compact, very upright, and they mm -hmm. flower beautifully. They have mm -hmm. a spirea type flower mm -hmm. and they have the purple leaves. Some of them also have kind of a caramely colored leaf. So you get mm -hmm. leaf color, you get flowers. They attract hummingbirds and butterflies. So yeah, and easy plant. maintenance mm -hmm. and it gives you that nice purple color that mm -hmm. you know uh, like a purple leaf sand cherry would but this I find is a lot tidier. Mm -hmm. What about the fall? Does this uh, how, would it, how does this all change it all in color? Yes a bit? It, the color will intensify in the yep. fall so this particular one will go like a dark dark purple nice. and it so then it gives you that change mm -hmm. throughout the season yeah, as well. That's always that's something to think about is, again as you're planting Definitely. your garden is thinking about how it's going to change through the season. Yes and I think that's the fun part about gardening like some it people is. Um, like when you plant annuals, that's what you're going to get through the whole season. So that's your consistent bit. Right. But with perennials and with shrubs, then that gives you the change. That's and that's that element too. of change in mm -hmm. your garden. Absolutely. So, and up front of mm -hmm. the nine bark there yeah. is a heuchera. That's mm -hmm. heuchera caramel. Mm -hmm. So you can see the nice contrast with the colors there. Yep. Um, this heucheras are typically kind of a purpley color, but this right. one having the caramel that one's color. Lighter. It just kind of is a nice contrast. Mm -hmm. And again, always making sure. Again, always nice having an evergreen. evergreen. Yes, this is another globe cedar, but this one is a golden globe. Okay. So particularly in spring, this all the new growth is like a limey chartreuse kind of golden green color. So That's it nice. just is that bright impact in the yeah. spring. And again, it, you get the nice look over. Um, and we have one last Christmas. one before we go. One over last one is my Monet Sunset. Mm -hmm. And this is a Wigilia. Mm -hmm. Again, very small and only gets about a foot and a half to two feet tall. Flowers, nice pink flowers, but all the new growth is variegated in pink, green, and cream. Awesome. So it goes to beautiful. show you there are a lot of options for a very, to have a garden wherever you are, whatever space, you can make it look beautiful and Definitely. you can work with it and lower maintenance as well. Thanks, yeah. Colleen. All right, that's it for now. More Tara at home to come. When I dream, I dream in color. When I think of color, I think of Tara. Make your dreams come true at Terra, where color lives. You've sat under them and built forts in them. You've swung from them and fell out of them. You've even fallen in love under them. Trees have always held a special place in our hearts and memories. A natural beauty, trees will grow with you and your family and bring color and nature into your world. For your assurance of quality, look for trees and shrubs with the medallion plant tag. Medallion plants, locally grown, the pride of Niagara. The Hamilton Spectator, at work, at home, or on the go. Read us online, in print, or download us to your e-reader. Get the Hamilton Spectator any way you want it. Good morning and welcome back to Tara at Home. We are in a beautiful Ancaster at Bella's of Ancaster and I'm here with Sarah, the food and beverage manager at this uh, beautiful restaurant. Now we would often, a lot of people would say, hey, where's that? I, I, 
I, I, I wonder, I've heard that name, but it's actually the old Philip Shaper's house. That's right. Right? So let's talk a little bit about how this came to be. Anybody who's been in this area or lives in Ancaster would know of this home and the history, some history of it. But it goes back quite some, uh, quite a period of time, doesn't it? It does. Mm -hmm. um, the home was um, built in 1835, but the property was obtained in 1831 mm -hmm. by Philip Shaver. And they had 100 acres of property, and they built this lovely home here. Um, and in 1982, the property was then sold, so mm -hmm. it actually remained in the family until 1982. Mm -hmm. And so it's taken uh, it's taken its turn and through life since then, and uh, up until about uh, what about a year ago or so, it yeah. became. So it was Bella of Ancaster mm -hmm. as of a year ago. Mm -hmm. So we still keep the name Philip Shaver House Bella of Ancaster. Right. But it's new ownership. It's the same owners that used to own the um, Dutch Mill, which is mm -hmm. on Millgrove Side Road. So That's they right. took their inspiration and their creativity and they built this wonderful home and uh, wonderful. renovated it. And that's the thing, extensive renovations, it's been completely freshened up, keeping a lot of the character of, you know, the old, old home that it that it is, but adding some beautiful current uh, style and design and Absolutely, yes. makes it for a very nice environment. Absolutely, it's great. So a great dining experience for, for people to come in here and again, a beautiful environment. And I love that it's, you know, there are all still these separate little rooms and, and little coves and that's what makes it very cozy and gives it a lot of character because because of again looking at uh, the old style that's still here and you know like windows going from room to room and, and being tucked in tables down the stairs there's, a, there's something to be said about that when, when dining out uh, with your family Definitely. and friends. Well, it's neat too because you have different moods. Each room mm -hmm. has its own mood. So we have a solarium and then we have this wonderful room that we're sitting in now, which is called the parlor mm -hmm. and the Hamilton room. And it's unique because we also have rooms that are closed off. So if you had private functions, wow. we can um, accommodate private, uh, maybe families up to 20 in that room, maybe a little bit less, maybe between nice. 16 mm -hmm. uh, to 20. Um, and then we have these wonderful rooms as well. So we can have multiple functions going on. Mm -hmm. um, and they yeah, that's nice actually yeah. and to have that and, and the, it gives it such a warm, cozy feel to people and people are very much about environment, right? People really want Absolutely. to walk into a space and feel, I mean, this all-encompassing all design and just colors and it's warm, um, not a big open vacant space, right? Absolutely. So, so let's talk a little bit about the food because sure. we have all this beautiful food in front of us and, uh, and your chef, um, his, his inspirations and you can see so very much about fresh and local. Absolutely. So mm -hmm. um, Roddy's inspiration for his food is to utilize what's around us. Um, so we're using any kind of local products, um, mm -hmm. essentially doing the 100 mile concept. But sure. That doesn't work for all seasons, but right. we are using as far as our proteins go and vegetables as many local products as we can. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so I can just tell you about each. Yeah. So let's. Like. Why don't we start off with uh, with the, with this this beautiful uh, main here <laughs> and, and, sure. just, and get an idea. Or maybe we should talk about appetizers first. Sure. Let's we, start we with should, the app. We should talk is how we eat. <laughs> Absolutely. So that's okay. Good. I'm like. Oh, that's so good. <laughs> okay. Um, so we have here some pan seared scallops, and then he's finished them on the grill. So you're mm -hmm. going to have that nice kind of. Uh, undertone of earthiness with mm -hmm. those scallops and it's put on a bed of um, a celery -a puree mm -hmm. as well as grilled asparagus so once again you're mimicking those kind of charred flavors within mm -hmm. the asparagus mm -hmm. and then he has a hot and sour sauce to finish oh, off neat. which is quite nice mm -hmm. and then he's um, putting as the garnish some lovely microgreens and some citrus just once again mimicking that hot and sour flavor and we're talking again you know when you you know you first eat with your eyes and so really seeing such a beautiful plate like that and it's gorgeous and again following just that whole theme of being as local as possible and bringing in, you know, the, as many flavors as we as we you know would love to see within our season. That that just works out so nicely. So that's that's gorgeous. And it's always again nice to talk about. You know, certain shops always had their thing, right? Absolutely. So you would soon uh, recognize some of the, the common themes and threads Definitely. and what he likes with his food. So let's talk about the main. So here we have a pan seared, and then it's finished in the oven. It would be a roasted moulard duck breast. So it's mm -hmm. coming from Quebec. Mm -hmm. and then we have a red fruit glaze or a compote that goes with that, and then we're serving it with seasonal heirloom micro vegetables. Wow, I look at that and I just lo I love vegetables, so that's just like, that is just a real big party on a plate right there. Yeah, <laughs> it's absolutely. awesome with the beets and very, very beautiful, very good. Absolutely. Okay, so now you have a culinary background yourself, right? I do, so actually. So you I'm had your little take in this uh, dessert <laughs> here today. Um, so um, this particular dessert is mm -hmm. a pavlova. So it's mm -hmm. delicious um, pavlova, the meringues, and then on top of it is a citrus vanilla custard. Um, essentially, we just took a pastry cream um, that was house-made and we folded in whipped cream and then we are serving it with a chocolate glaze and a um, orange compote. So it's a flambéed wow. orange compote and Grand Marnier. Fresh berries and chiffonade of uh, mint. Wow. So. 
That is something. That's a sharesy, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It depends if you have a sweet tooth. <laughs> I know. I mean, I just I might start with that. That's kind of what I like to do. Start with dessert. Absolutely. Okay. So so let's talk about the experience coming here um, again. Whether it's with uh, you know your partner or the family, friends, um, having this whole experience from beginning to end, and uh, in the you are you, one thing you did mention to me was the dessert is ever changing. The dessert. That's menu. right. So I mean, once again, we want to do something seasonally inspired. So mm -hmm. we're going to go with fruits. Um, obviously that look fresh. Um, mm -hmm. I know that the owner Elaine has a concept where she wants to be able to do fresh fruit pies and there's so many farms around here where we have local mm, growers mm -hmm. which is nice so you know we're lucky to be close to the country where we can actually just go forage ingredients and then be inspired by that so mm -hmm. that's quite nice. Um, and forever changing so yes. um, there will be things that are classic of course mm -hmm. um, you know every menu needs a creme brulee sometimes and right. um, some people like those traditionally they want to see that uh, that that's that good old standby that that makes them feel good exactly <laughs> exactly so um, you know it's nice because having a culinary background and, and working with the chef here we can mm -hmm. collaborate on ideas and just sort of you know bounce them back and forth so mm -hmm. we can um, you know be inspired by each other as well sure. so, nice. so if we jump over to the beverage side of things uh, you have a uh, a, a good wine list and because people always want to know the drink as well it's all part of the, the social environment so we have mm -hmm. quite a few Ontario wines actually mm -hmm. um, we have Creekside and a variety of other wineries around here and we're mm -hmm. going to be building our list as well mm -hmm. so that just some, one, once again comes with you know trying new things and seeing what happens with respect to the wineries and their seasons as well mm -hmm. and of course we do have um, <coughs> imported wines so sure um, we're going to have a nice drink menu that we're putting out soon and once mm -hmm. again the seasonally inspired drinks so we want to do a strawberry rhubarb bourbon sour oh nice it's quite nice and see um, and that's always fun right people love that that's what and again you, what happens in a place like this an environment like this is people you get your regulars right absolutely so you know that these people are coming in and they're like oh what do we have now what do we have here and, exactly. and they love and that's what makes it exciting and entices people back right because it's yeah. something exciting even from the drink all the way through to the end of the menu and uh, exactly. so they want to sit around and be in this space absolutely right yeah. So again, for small, 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 again, you can also book a room as you suggested. It's, it's true, and we're mm -hmm. trying to, um, you know, we definitely want to entice, you know, mm -hmm. people in corporate business even to come sure. here, and they want a private room so they can have a working dinner or a working lunch. Mm -hmm. um, we have that capability, but then we can accommodate, mm -hmm. you know, our, our guests as well that are right. um, coming in exactly. you know, pairs or fours. And the beautiful little gift store in the back. Yeah, and absolutely. It makes like sparkly things. We have all sorts of wonderful things and it's ladies love it. <laughs> I was going to say. They're at, and then you know what? Their husbands can sit down, have a glass of wine or a beer and they can go shopping. Exactly. Oh, it's, uh, that works out on, for all worlds. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> Thank you so much, sir. We Thanks. appreciate My it. Pleasure. And again, Bella's of Ancaster. We'll Thank be back you. with more Chair at Home after this. When I dream, I dream in color. When I think of color, I think of Tara. Make your dreams come true at Tara, where color lives. Heritage Perennials, look for us in the blue pots. Good morning, welcome back to Terra at Home. And uh, we're back with Chef Mark from La Piazza Allegra restaurant in Hamilton. And you always make us such good food, so we're gonna keep having you back, okay? Thank you, sounds good. <laughs> I was like, oh, we can't wait to try it afterwards. <laughs> So we've been talking about barbecue season and yes. uh, we're full-fledged into it. Some people barbecue all year round. They get on the winter boots and the coat. No, they go. 
some people this is their focus time so right. we need to use that and it's nice to smell it in the neighborhood you know everyone's barbecuing and mm -hmm. so we got to come up with some different ideas some fun things to do we do so we you know there's a bunch of different ways you can do things we've mm -hmm. done some brining I've, I've showed you some brining yep there's obviously uh, marinades and stuff like that and then there's dry rubs mm -hmm. um, and to do a dry rub it, it really gives a nice flavor to meat without um, without losing I, I guess the the the, the meat it's itself, the juices okay. of the meat, because you're not you're not soaking it in anything. Right. You're just making a nice little spice herb, mm -hmm. putting it on top. You're getting grill. You get all the natural flavor out of the meat that mm -hmm. comes out, um, and it blends really well with that. Now. Yeah. Now, I was just going to say that a lot of people like to do the dry rub thing themselves versus, I mean, there are lots of spices and rubs mm -hmm. out there, but if you make your own, as you were about to show us, you have more control over sodium levels and, exactly. and exactly what maybe the herb that you particularly like the most yeah, and, and your combination. Right. You kind of yeah. play around with it, right? Exactly. So we have a couple here, just to give you an example. Mm -hmm. One of them is uh, paprika mm -hmm. and the other one is cayenne. Ah. Well, see, I like a little bit of spice, so I'm sure. going to use a little bit more cayenne. If you okay. don't like it, you can always leave it out. Right. Uh, the paprika is going to give you that nice smoky flavor. So, right. if, you know, there's some people that are not a fan of that. They just mm -hmm. want something a little more savory without that smokiness. Mm -hmm. You can leave the paprika out of that. So, okay. by blending your own, you do have a lot more control yes. over it. Yes. And, there, and there's endless combinations. Sure. I mean, you know, this is one that I put together for this ribeye here. Mm -hmm. um, but it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to do this for all boneless ribeyes. Um, mm -hmm. I've also used dehydrated onion and, and garlic mm -hmm. flakes and mm -hmm. used that as a dry rub okay. as well. So, okay. So, lots of combinations. And, and really, it's just about experimentation. I think once you you try it at home, then you say, okay, maybe next time I might do this. Yeah. Or again, it just depends how much health you are with yeah, the herbs um, too, right? What you and want, spices. what you like. And mm -hmm. So what I've done so far is I have some bay leaves. Now okay. bay leaves, these are dry bay leaves. It mm -hmm. actually has a really, really nice flavor to it, mm -hmm. but it has to be ground down. Yeah. A lot of them are used, bay leaves are used in soups and stocks and right. stuff like that, mm -hmm. um, where you have the moisture and that's where you're getting your flavor from. Mm -hmm. With this, I've ground it down. So I, I put it in uh, my mortar and pestle and just mm -hmm. blend it down as much as I can. Okay. So I almost turned yeah. it into a powder ahead of time. Okay, all right. Okay. I see. Yep. So now I'm going to take a little bit of dry thyme. Mm -hmm. Now the thyme is going to give you that outdoor, woodsy, um, mm. very robust kind yes. of flavor. Love that. We're going to take a little bit of the cayenne. Any dry herbs that you wouldn't recommend? Um, Anything that you should stay away from that shouldn't be put on a grill or shouldn't be in that environment? The only ones I would stay away from are the ones that you use for baking. So uh, some people do like cinnamon and stuff like that, yes. mace and stuff sure, like that. Sure, yeah, but some people do, but I know what you mean. It, it's not, it's, I don't like it. No. I think, you know, things that taste like baking should be left for baking, but that's, again, <laughs> and that's the beauty about yeah, doing something like this. there's an association with cinnamon sometimes, <laughs> it's hard, right? You know, like it's just sometimes it's just good in oatmeal and baking. Things. That's right, exactly. <laughs> So, okay, so what if you didn't have a uh, mortar and pestle? Can you, you how, can, how else can you do this? The only thing you'd have to be worried about is those bay leaves. Yeah, I was going to say, because you really need to you get really them. You really get them down. So you can put that mm -hmm. into a, a coffee grinder or something like that and grind okay. it down. Okay. Um, that will work as well. Mm -hmm. um, but all we did here is we've just taken all this, we've mm -hmm. mixed it all together. I added some brown sugar or mm -hmm. golden sugar to this, mm -hmm. and we're just going to mix that around. Okay, so the sugar, is that going to give a little bit of caramelization to it? It's going to give some caramelization. Yes. It's going to give it a little bit of sweetness, which is going to balance the cayenne. The okay. That's right. Okay. Now, the only thing, if you notice, the only thing I did not put in here is the salt and pepper. I'm just going to put right. that directly onto the steak, especially the salt, because you want to be able to know how much you're putting on. Yeah, So true, if you put it right. in here, you're going to be left. You don't know. That's and, right. and it's amazing how, um, you know, uh, you as a chef, know this better than anyone, but I find sometimes just a steak with, you know, a little bit of olive oil and salt pepper is amazing on its own, Fantastic. right? Yep. But if you want to add some flavor to it, again, again, you're all about salting the meat directly, pepper, right. and then and then doing this. So did you, are you going to do the salt afterwards then you said? I'm going to salt it now. Once I put Once all this on, this. I'm going to massage this into the, okay. to the meat. Mm -hmm. and just get it into there so that it has time to incorporate and mm -hmm. of course you could do this ahead of time sure the only thing you wouldn't do is do the salt ahead of time because that just dries the meat out right so there is there is a lot of truth to that right people have it heard does. that and yeah. okay so it does dry the meat alone. out so leave it out and mm -hmm. you know if you wanted to change this to a wet marinade you could do it as a wet marinade as well right um, again just leave the salt out okay 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 so wet marinade you would involve you would add some oil to it you can add some oil to it you can add some pureed garlic you can add some Worcestershire to it mm, okay all right. there we go we'll put all that in there and again, we're just going to 
massage that. So what are you going to get differently from a dry rub that you would get from a, a wet one as you were just suggesting? Anything um, different? You're going to get a little bit less flare-ups when you're cooking, which makes it a little bit easier. Ah, so that, okay. that's one thing. Okay. Um, the other thing is you do get a little bit of a drier steak when it comes off the grill. Yes. It doesn't have all that moisture that you would okay. have. And some people really like that. That's actually really, it's yeah. a nice, it's a nice. Uh, if it's done right, you know yes. what? It, it is a really nice way of cooking. Mm -hmm. So okay. we'll salt it now and pepper. All right, so then it comes to, okay, what do you cook it to? Ideally, a chef likes to cook. Medium rare, medium mm -hmm. at most. Mm -hmm. um, you know, when people order something well done, I cringe a little bit. Yeah. What are you going <laughs> to we'll do? We'll do it. We okay. do it. We'll let you, you know, but yeah, I bet that's tough. So we have our grill nice mm -hmm. and hot. Okay. And put it on and just leave it alone for a second. Don't be, keep moving around, right? Just leave it alone. Yes. Let it do its thing. Okay. And we'll just let that go. And how long would you let that cook for? Well, there's a trick and I'll explain that to you in a bit. Oh, look at this. He's keeping us <laughs> suspense. Oh, you're Mr. Television now, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so what we'll do is uh, we'll let this cook for a few minutes and, um, you know, and we'll find out some of your secrets when we return on, on uh, the perfect grilled, grilled steak. Is that what we're going to do? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It will, I will what show else? you. What you have a something nice, else in there, too? I you know what? I put some corn in there. Ah. I'm just roasting up some corn and we're going to finish it off on the grill as well. Ah, nice combo. Yeah. All, right. All right, we'll take a quick break. We'll come back and finish it up. When I dream, I dream in color. When I think of color, I think of Tara. Make your dreams come true at Terra, where color lives. You've sat under them and built forts in them. You've swung from them and fell out of them. You've even fallen in love under them. Trees have always held a special place in our hearts and memories. A natural beauty, trees will grow with you and your family and bring color and nature into your world. For your assurance of quality, look for trees and shrubs with the medallion plant tag. Medallion plants, locally grown, the pride of Niagara. Welcome back to Terra at Home. We're back here with Chef Mark from La Piazza Allegra and uh, we're doing some summer grill in here. We have a beautiful steak on the barbecue, and it's shall we take a look? It's fantastic. It looks good. You've so, done a very nice job. <laughs> I did tell you I was going to teach you a little trick. It's a you little did. bit silly, but it does work. Okay. So there's the, the meaty part of your thumb oh, here. Right. Yes. If you touch the first two, mm -hmm. that's about medium rare. Mm -hmm. You move over to the middle one, that's about medium. Mm -hmm. Medium well mm -hmm. and well done. So you can see how it firms up. It does. It really and does. And that's what you're it. looking for here. Okay. So see, you can see. <sighs> You're just, but you have like fingers of steel. <laughs> <laughs> Some people be afraid to do that, but you can do that, and you're all right. You and can. then it gets without having to cut into meat because if you're serving um, steaks to, you don't want to be cutting into everything. You don't want steak, to be right? cutting into. And you're also into releasing it. the juices. You don't That's want to do right. that, right? That's right. Okay. So what we would do is, for this one, we're going to go straight from grill onto the plate. But you do want to set the meat aside and let it set for a few right. minutes and that helps rehydrate the meat. Okay, because if you cut into it, all the juices go out and it could That's dry out pretty right. quickly, right? So when you're, right. you're, how long are you letting it set to the side? I would say about um, four minutes or so. You okay. just want to put it down, put maybe a little tin foil off to the side of the yes. grill on the off side, mm -hmm. just keep it warm, but just let it set and then okay. it'll come back. Okay, and then back. you're good to go. People are always afraid it's going to get cold and I need to have a hot stick nah. on my plate, but it doesn't. It's perfect. Yeah. Good temperature and Good to go. I noticed you uh, did a little bit of corn. Um, yeah, I just so put originally it on the you grill. had it wrapped in foil, right? Right. So it, because I put it on raw, I wrapped it in foil so mm -hmm. it would cook slowly. Mm -hmm. Then I took it out of the foil and I just put it right onto the grill mm -hmm. and rotated a few times. And done. Easy. And you're done. And it's amazing how in the summertime, that's all people need, right? That's all you just need. A piece of meat and like, <laughs> and some I like corn some and big away old tomatoes go. on there too. There and that's a good, go. uh, that's that's especially as good as you're going into August and all these these yeah, fruits and vegetables and stuff are comes in. prime yeah. time. You must love cooking this time of year. I do. You know all what? Right? There's so much to choose from. Mm -hmm. And like I said, I grill almost, you can grill anything. Yes. Grill anything. I'm so. learning. <laughs> We've talked about this. I'm learning. I've got a grill. All right, that's it for now. Again, you can always check out our recipes at terragreenhouses.com. Always great to have you on the show, Thank Chef you. Mark, and that was like a lovely steak. Have yourself a great week, and maybe you can make yourself one of these. Take care. Thank you.